So I would love to hear from you all. How has doing drag changed your experience of gender? Yeah, so for me, I am a cis male. I come from the real Grand Valley where we don't ever really have these talks. Come on, 956, Pluto 956. And I moved over here seven years ago for school, and my first time going to the gay club, it was, it was like, it was amazing. Uh, it was really like glitter, magical unicorns, like that whole fantasy was everything. But uh, doing drag has been a totally different experience for me. Um, and even though I've never questioned my gender identity, I have questioned the way that I want to express myself. So it's allowed me to really unlock the doors about, um, for how masculinity and, and, um, and femininity, uh, like being a vessel for that. Um, you know, and some of my favorite artists like Freddie Mercury, Prince, they, 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 they capture both masculine and feminine energy. So I, I would say that for my own personal experience, it's allowed me to find the way that I truly want to express myself. And it's allowed me to also find, um, have, a, a, it's, you know, growing up in the Valley, they don't tell you a lot about gender identity. You don't see a lot of it in your communities. And oftentimes the way that we other different communities doesn't allow us to see ourselves within them. And I would also say that being an entertainer myself, that has allowed me to really just uh, involve myself in different communities and really see myself uh, in uh, within them and, and as them. So, yeah, that's my answer. <laughs> well, shit. For me, hi, everyone. Can we get some energy real quick? Thank you. So, for myself, I've been doing drag for almost eight years. And when I first started, uh, I was not as comfortable with who I am and my gender and sexuality. Through drag, I was able to understand that I am not just, you know, a cis person who does drag or I'm not just a non-binary person who does drag. I am a transgender feminine person who participates in the art of drag. So that's the biggest thing is that, uh, Drag helped me realize who I am as a woman. I am the suspiciously large woman of Austin, but um, it has helped give me the opportunity to not only explore my identity, I know I'm loud and crazy and I threw myself on the floor, but outside of drag, I can be kind of quiet and shy. I know you wouldn't think that looking at this, but uh, yeah, it's just drag gives you the opportunity to explore every facet of yourself and like taking that outside of just performing really broadens our horizons. You know what I mean? So that's kind of what it is for me. I love that. Beautiful. I'm curious if there are any, if there's a misperception that you think a lot of people have about drag or about drag performers. So I like, for me, when I went to, to drag and I started in drag, the first time I saw the queens, like I didn't really understand what was going on. I didn't, you know, it's it's easy to think of a performer in, in like in in different types of contexts. But as I've as I started in 2019, I've I've been doing it for since how many years is that? One, like right two, before the right before the pandemic. I yeah. You've been doing it longer than that. <laughs> they look stunning. Thank you. And and so like watching all these different performances, I would say that the biggest misconception is that it's, you know, drag is not just one thing. What you see on television is just a small small snippet, but there are so many performances where you can see high energy, you can see sexy, you can see vulnerable, you can see alternative, and the way that people express themselves is so beautiful. So if any of y'all, how many of y'all have been to a drag show before? Make some noise. Oh, look at this crowd. How many of y'all is this your first introduction to drag? Make some noise. Woo, yes. We got one. One in the back, girl. I saw you. <laughs> well, I would ask all of y'all to implore um, your different entertainers around the city because I guarantee you that it will change your perception about the entertainers. And if it touches you, it might even change your perception about yourself. So, yeah. It's a little weird. So the, one of the misconceptions that I get being that I'm a large person, I'm loud, I'm boisterous, um, I don't come across as like dainty and petite. In my mind, I am. But I don't come across as that. So a lot of times when I'm in drag, like big hair, big jewelry and everything, people think I'm a man dressing up as this character. And it's like, uh, it takes them a second to realize when I tell you, hi, this isn't just a character and this isn't just 
dress up. This is an extension of who I am as a person. And so then, you know, every response under the sun could be imagined. I think the best ones are those who think that, oh, well, this is just, you know, a man playing dress up. And then I get to tell them, no, I'm a trans person who participates in drag and uh, give them a little history on the fact that, you know, our community was built off uh, trans women of color. And so getting to tell them about these things, uh, you kind of look at them and you see that, that switch. It's, it's flipped. And even if they don't understand it completely, it gives them the opportunity to expand their own knowledge. And so that's, that's a crazy misconception. But, honey, I'm here to destroy gender norms, okay? Fuck gender normativity, bitches. <laughs> can I say bitches? Oh, well. Yes, you can say whatever you want. I love, that's amazing. And thank you both for sharing. And now I, I wonder if you would, if you have any, like, queen words of wisdom for us, like, normies to use in daily life that you've learned from drag? You're normal. <laughs> you are sitting up here with more sequins on than both of us right now. Ain't nothing normal up here, girl. And this hair is fucking phenomenal. I've been looking at it all night. You guys, when I do a theme, I do it all the way. I mean, you're using hypercolor cups because I'm like, it's 90s, everything has to be 90s. I'm like, doing it. Well, uh, I'm a super... Well, okay, so my... What was the question? Oh, any like words of wisdom. Words of, oh, wisdom. Word, words of wisdom. So like, okay, so in drag, my experience has been a journey. I started off as you know very female presenting. I've you know now I've gone very androgynous, and I really like to blur the lines. So for me, it's been a question of like, who am I? What what is my place in the world, and how do I find it? And I think this really applies to everybody. You know, um, in the drag community. It's one thing to be shady, and shade is a very big thing in our community where we, you know, we often use jokes as a way to... Kind uh, of read each other. Yeah. Like, pick flaws out. Yeah, and, like, I'm an introvert who dresses as an extrovert. Like, I really do not, like, Same. I pr like to participate in that. So being able to find the spaces that make me feel uncomfortable and stay true to myself is honestly the biggest challenge that um, I've been facing over these past couple of years because... You know, no one wants to go into a space and then leave not feeling the, their authentic self. And that's a journey that I think all of us have to explore. But um, it, it really is just finding your own heart, finding what feels right, and, um, and kind of disregarding the things that, that you know don't feel right or don't feel good to yourself. So my words of wisdom. Thank you. Uh, words of wisdom. The easiest thing is support queer art. Outside of this amazing event, Come to our shows, come and talk to both of us, follow us on Instagram, give us that attention, but also get to know where we perform, because they have shows every week, I have shows every week, and so the biggest words of wisdom is to understand what we do is to show up and see what we do. So support our art, support shows, just support queer artists, and you'll get to see what we do outside of just this, you know what I mean? Or what you do outside of this. I think the biggest thing that anyone can do, queer, cis, non-binary, is be supportive. So that's my words of wisdom, okay? Where do we find y'all on Instagram? What are your Instagram handles so we can follow you right now? So you can follow me under the, the at sign profile name. <laughs> that search bar. <laughs> <laughs> that girl. No, it's uh, justice underscore MX. Again, justice underscore MX. That's me. And mine is the, T-H-E, only Maxine. And if you know of another Maxine, please tell me. Because I have yet to meet one, so I'm over here like, I'm the only one, but... We've been looking for them, and we... We have, have besides Maxine Waters. I don't know of another one. We're no, claiming my, my lime. My baby, my five-year-old, her middle name is Maxine, so... Are you serious? Yeah. Okay, so now here's what you got to do. Y'all, I host a brunch at Halcyon on 4th Street every Saturday. All ages, everyone is welcome. Y'all need to come. Bring them out. We are here to support everybody. I love that. I love that. Y'all, yeah. thank you so much. This was so great to hear from y'all. You're incredible performers and brilliant. And I thank you so much for sharing your thoughts.